Hi there, Luke here with another video. For those of you unfamiliar with our channel, my husband Tyler and I make weekly travel videos where we document our experiences since moving from North America to the UK. If you watched our last video, you'll know that we finished up in the area of Cornwall in southwestern England. In this video, I'm going to walk you through what we did after that, which was do the first part of our experience in Scotland. We were in Scotland for about four weeks, and we explored lots of different regions of Scotland. In this video, I'm going to focus more on the Glasgow area, as well as some of the other national parks and natural beauty areas that are in the eastern part of Scotland. We drove our rental car in Cornwall all the way up back to Shrewsbury, which is where we rented the car, and then took the train the next morning up to Glasgow. We proceeded from our accommodation to the Glasgow Green, which is a pretty park that we enjoyed walking around. Here you can enjoy St. Andrew's Suspension Bridge, as well as views of the People's Palace. In front of the palace is the Dalton Fountain, which is the largest example of a terracotta fountain in the world. Following this, we headed to Glasgow Cathedral. We were a little disappointed to find out that it was closed due to COVID, but we still were able to enjoy the area because right next to it is the Glasgow Necropolis, which is a really beautiful graveyard in Glasgow and offers really ornate and beautifully crafted tombstones and just a really nice place to walk around, especially on a sunny day like we had it when we were there. We then proceeded to walk through the downtown core of Glasgow from east to west and just enjoyed taking our time walking through the city a bit and eventually reached Kelvin Grove Park. There are lots of really nice walking paths here in Kelvin Grove Park as well as a museum. Do note that at least at the time that we were there, they required advanced booking up to a day in advance. But for us, we lucked out because even though we hadn't booked anything in advance, it was kind of a last minute thing that we decided to go. We did luck out that there was a no show. So we were actually able to enter. Our last stop of the day was grabbing some food and some pints at Brewdog Brewery. So that's a nice spot to go if you're in the mood for some nice food and beer. After our time in Glasgow, we picked up a rental car and proceeded first to the Loch Lomond and the Trossachs National Park. It was a bit of a rainier day when we were driving through, so we just kind of enjoyed driving, taking our time, and taking in some of the views that we got from our car, as well as stopping at the small town of Luss, where we enjoyed some coffees and walking to the pier just to look at the lake and some of the mountain views in the distance. Our main highlight of the day was visiting the Scottish Cranach Centre, which was an open-air museum that featured different exhibits and exhibitions showing how life was in older, more traditional times, and particularly during the Iron Age in Scotland. We were devastated to learn, though, that unfortunately, only a few weeks after we visited, that this beautiful Cranach had actually accidentally burnt down. And so unfortunately at this point, this Cranach is totally destroyed. I don't know what the Cranach Center is doing at this point, just because I imagine that this is such a devastating loss for them, as well as the community at large. So I was just really heartbroken to hear that, and I wish them the best. The following morning, we proceeded to the town of Kenmore, where we walked around a little bit, and then we proceeded to do a short walk to what is called the Queen's View, which is a really beautiful view of Loch Tummel. We were fortunate that around the time that we were doing this walk and got this view, that the weather did improve a bit. 
So we were really pleased that it was a bit of sunnier weather to enjoy this majestic view. The sun unfortunately did not stick around for long as it was a bit of an unsettled day. So we decided to do an indoor activity and headed to Glom's Castle. Glom's Castle is a 14th century castle that is most known for being the childhood home of the late Queen Mother and was actually the birthplace of the late Princess Margaret. She was actually the first royal to be born in Scotland since I think like the 1600s. So that is kind of one of the more interesting facts about this castle. From here, we headed east towards the coast to the town of Arbroath and visited Arbroath Abbey, which are these quite pretty castle ruins in the middle of this town. And we actually enjoyed it even though it was a bit rainy because we found it was a bit moody and interesting to see. So that was a fun way to finish off the rest of our day. The following day, we drove to the city of Aberdeen. We enjoyed walking around the city and along the waterfront where the waves were pretty intense and fun to watch from the safety of the walking area. And then we proceeded back into town and enjoyed looking at the various granite buildings that Aberdeen is known for. Later that day, we headed out of the city to visit Donatar Castle, which are actually castle ruins, but are an absolute must see if you are in this area of Scotland, because they are absolutely stunning. They're just really well situated on this cliff right on the eastern coast of Scotland and offer unparalleled views that are just really beautiful and majestic to experience in person. There's just something really beautiful about these old ruins in this natural landscape. So I can't recommend this place enough. You can easily spend lots of time just walking around the various different points and enjoying all of the different vantage points of the area. Again, cannot recommend this place enough. We woke up the next day in our Airbnb in Aberdeen and proceeded to our next destination, which was Cairngorms National Park. Our first point of interest within the park was heading towards Crathy. And in order to get here, we decided to park our car in the Balmoral Castle car park. From here, we enjoyed a lovely hike towards Prince Albert's Cairn, which was a monument that was erected in memory of the Queen Victoria's late husband, Prince Albert. It's a pyramid that is quite beautiful in contrast to the trees and natural surrounding that you're in. And even the walk towards this cairn is really lovely just being surrounded in this natural landscape. If you continue on the hike past the cairn, you can actually walk all the way to Balmoral Castle. And we were surprised to learn that you are able to just walk onto the grounds for free. So we enjoyed getting various views of Balmoral Castle, which for those of you who don't know, is one of the main royal residences of the Queen. 
and obviously this was a time that she wasn't staying there, so the public were able to visit some parts of the castle. We only did the exteriors, and we just really enjoyed looking at and appreciating this beautiful castle. After walking around the beautiful Balmoral Castle grounds, we got back in our car and proceeded to Dalwini Distillery, where we had a tour booked for a whiskey distillery experience. To be perfectly honest, Tyler and I are not the biggest whiskey fans, so we kind of did this to just have the experience and see if we would become whiskey fans out of it. At the end of the day, I think it's safe to say that whiskey is not our first drink of choice, but we are still glad that we appreciated it and got to experience what really good Scottish whiskey tastes like. We took our to-go bottles with us to our accommodation, which was actually in a camping pod. This was our first experience ever staying in a camping pod like this, and we actually really thought it was quite cool. It was kind of our first foray into kind of the glamping experience, so that was fun. And Tyler enjoyed his little whiskey bottles, and then we proceeded to a local pub to have some dinner and relax for the rest of the evening. For our last day in this region, we proceeded to drive to the famous capital of the Highlands that is Inverness. We walked around the city a little bit, mostly enjoying things and the exteriors because unfortunately a lot of things were closed at the time that we were there. We didn't actually love Inverness as much as we thought we were going to. It felt a bit touristy, it kind of felt like just any other big town and we found that there were a ton of other places in the Highlands, especially smaller villages that we felt were a bit nicer and gave us that warm sentimental feeling that you think of when you think of the Scottish Highlands. All right, everyone, that is it for this video. As you can probably notice, we are starting to dip our toe into the Scottish Highlands, and in our next video, we have even more to explore in the Highlands. So definitely stay tuned for that, where we will be taking you along the NC500, which is a beautiful beautiful coastal route that you can experience in the Highlands and was one of the highlights of our time in Scotland. So definitely check that out. There are a lot of beautiful spots to see in this part of the country. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Have you been to these areas of Scotland? Please, if you have input, let us know in the comments down below. I love hearing from you guys. Can't wait to see you at our next video. Have a good one. Bye!